head, and there he goes. A fist gonna clean him up. Olaf goes down. Everyone's just gonna line up here for Lazzy. He's gonna find himself the Quadra. I give it to him. It's a kill. Grizzly with the quad feet gets the ace. Available just spin to win all over. That game was insane. Hello everybody and welcome back to some collegiate Rainbow Six action here on the Saints Gaming Channel. My name as always is Shadi Zedihana, joined alongside Danners, Mr. Danners Banners. I always have such a hard time figuring out what the best way to call you is. It's probably practice. Come up with something short and sweet to do it. But it is going to be a game on Cafe here against Grand Canyon University. Now, Danners, you were telling me before the cast that these guys are a club team, but they seem to be pretty good. Absolutely. We have uh, we did a little bit of research, taking a look and seeing what this team is all about. And yeah, even though they're club, they have access to an esports arena. They do like community nights on whether it be casual or varsity level like competition. It's time and time again, this team, from what it sounds like, they're in a league not too long ago. I think it was CRA or something like that, placed second, and I believe we have the same team here tonight. So the Saints going to have quite the tough task up ahead of him here, but that just seems to be the name of the game here in this Collegiate R6 Premier League, where the Saints, they made it in, which is of course the first accomplishment, but now you're up against the big boys, and sometimes that can get extremely difficult. Let's see if the Saints can break that loss streak and find themselves on the right side of the, the win column here today. Yeah, taking a quick look at these bands leading into it, nothing too surprising so far from what we've seen from both of these teams, really. Uh, Thatcher obviously coming out that soft reach, good to get him off the board, moving into that Maverick band as well. And, you know, Maverick is definitely one of those uh, operators that we see quite frequently. Uh, seems to be real annoying. He likes to put a thorn in people's side. Now, this is more of an interesting band here, this four, uh, fourth one. He's going to talk about the Cade band, you know. Uh, also kind of fitting along the theme, but well, my is... Uh, a little bit uncharacteristic from what we've typically seen in bands on this map. Absolutely. It seems to be maybe something a little bit more personal on the side of... I think that would have been a Grand, Un Grand Canyon University band. Yeah. Because yeah. normally, like, Wamai well, is basically uh, Jaeger light. Instead of completely destroying a piece of utility or a, a grenade or something like that, it will instead kind of redirect it to somewhere offward. Now, one thing to note here, um, Impact is sitting on the new Operator Flores. That is a banned Operator. You cannot use him yet, so if sure enough, the 6 pick is going to have to be used. And putting uh, putting Impact onto Ash, that seems a little bit uh, more standard, to say the least. I was going to say, I was looking at that Operator list and I said, hmm, that's a, that's an interesting selection there, but it looks like we are going to switch things up, obviously. And now St. Clair's roster looks very familiar if you've been watching our streams and casts before. You know, very familiar oh, yeah. with a lot of these uh, aggressive picks. Actually, nothing, not a single one of these characters surprises me. Uh, I'm going to be honest, uh, still getting comfortable with these operators. Still trying to, you know, really get my mastery of these characters and how they function up. So it's a, it's a nice little blessing for me to see some familiar faces here in our first game. Uh, and on the side of Grand Canyon University as well, you know, most about everything seems pretty standard as well. Uh, I was a little intrigued by the Goyo pick, but it looked like he actually went in sixth pick that as well. Um, so there's going to be a little bit of a swap up here. Going into game number one as St. Clair goes through their traditional approach. Going to see likely a five-man climb. Usually what we like to see from these guys on this point. Yep, pretty well the standard. You, of course, have Zombie Dude on Sledge Duty. Going to just blow up as many of those hatches as possible. Get as much... Uh, vision onto what's close to the site, because of course right now Grand Canyon sitting on the, the third floor, one of the more comfortable spots here on Cafe, especially starting off, which you'll oftentimes see is teams prefer third floor than the first floor, just kind of bounce back and forth if they can. But if they are on a roll, you'll probably see that second floor come into play, but well, time will tell as we hop on in here. Cheeks is picking up the mozzie here, this time by an operator I know I didn't necessarily get the opportunity to uh, tell you about, but basically similar to how Mute can stop a, a drone, mozzie instead of stopping it, he'll steal it for himself with his little pest control gadgets. So it's going to kind of restrict some of the vision here from St. Clair as they get ready to try and find which kind of pathway of attack they want to go for here in the, the Christmas room here for this third floor. Yeah, I mean, definitely uh, interesting tech to see. I think we've seen the character picked up once or twice uh, before in the CR6, but 
uh, like you mentioned, it's a, it's a pretty tech heavy tech piece, not something you're going to see in most of the games that you play. Uh, I do like this approach from St. Clair. I like how they sent Bonk Bonk out for that initial flank, but it's now regrouped and we're moving up as that five-man push coming in through the third floor, working their way down. Uh, St. Clair finally found location on Bomb A, so that's going to give them a good, nice little bit of intel here on how they want to take this approach. Uh, but so far, everything's pretty slow. You know, we talk about this 20-second meta, and St. Clair is gearing up for... Uh, uh, a pretty late bloodbath so far in this game. Just trying to scout out some vision and maybe look to get an early pick. Uh, Big Papa had the read, but just a little bit too out of far out of that sight line. One of the things that I also mentioned here as well, we have, of course, Mend sitting here on the Clash. Of course, the only defensive operator with a riot shield going to just hold this corner and make things extremely difficult. This is normally where the Saints kind of want to push in. So it's not going to be the case. We even see Bonk Bonk there trying to use one of those air jabs to maybe get himself a free hit onto him. But meanwhile, Ooh. Charles managed to find himself onto site and oh. sure enough, not going to get away with that one. I like the attempt, but not going to work this time. Yeah, I saw that. I was waiting to call that out, but it's just going to get shut down. Cheeks is going to go trade it, however. So now it's a four for four. Its impact gets dropped as well. He's going to get taken out by Klimps. going to find the finishing blow. Now St. Clair trying to move in a little bit closer onto side A. They have vision, but Big Papa, he's going to drop as well. Klimps finding himself a double kill. Bonk Bonk under fire as well. They are able to pick up a second kill. A zombie dude finds himself that pick onto Klimps for the refrag. Now St. Clair kind of messed up a little bit by the barbed wires. They try to get in that riot shield, providing so much pressure. It's impossible for Bonk Bonk to fire through. He's going to drop as well. It just comes down to zombie dude. He is going to get taken out on the point. That's going to be GCU taking the win in round one. Just basically, eventually, everything lining up there for Grand Canyon University. I do believe there's one of those Maluzi Banshee devices inside the site as well. Because I was thinking to myself, why is St. Clair moving so slow here? But that would have been exactly why. Just could not make it through. You had, of course, Mend on the Clash as well. Has the, the Riot Shield, but that Riot Shield also electrifies you. Zaps you a little bit as you try to move forward. So there's just nothing you can do. You could try to make a push towards that Diffuser, but you're getting tagged the entire way through. And Saints just could not quite get it started. Char's almost found himself the diffuser plant but ever since there it went pretty well downhill well it looks like this time around colo is going to stick with the goyo and in fact the sixth pick is going to swing back to malusi so nearly a full repeat on the side of gcu from their roster in game number one i think they're obviously sticking with their strategy you know it doesn't work out the first time but you have so much experience on this team you've been playing with it nearly all year it's uh it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of comfort picks in this team, and it's just about kind of figuring out, you know, taking these first couple rounds to get some intel on your opponents and how they want to play, and, you know, don't blame the picks. Blame the execution, at least for the time being, as St. Clair. Gonna stick with what they know, get themselves ready up for game number two. Absolutely. The end all about the, the execution. It's I feel like Siege isn't that necessarily a point where there is, like, a must pick of sorts. I mean, there's probably right. plenty of people in the... Uh, in the chat that would argue with me. I think maybe the closest thing we have to a must pick is Jaeger, just because his utility, even when nerfed, is still too damn good. Those ADSs, just to get rid of any sort of grenade or any sort of utility is just too strong to pass up on, especially since Wumai, which is basically his counterpart, um, is banned here in this game. So we will be probably seeing him quite a lot here. Now, even though this attack is on, or this defense rather, is on the first floor, you're gonna see the Saints do the exact same start off to say the least as last time going off to the rooftops and they want him to go from the third floor and just clean sweep every floor make sure there's nobody sitting there waiting to uh get the flank onto him especially like say the malusi for example they're with uh with cash very fast operator very good at doing hit and runs especially if you're stuck in a banshee device so yeah first floor but you still have to go top down yeah, it looked like uh, there was a member of GCU that was peeking on that third floor, maybe trying to get a pick. Uh, unfortunately, Bonk Bonk, you know, on uh, that anti-roam did go pretty low, so wasn't able to actually spot that out. And thankfully for the Saints, no one did end up getting picked off in general. So we're going to be able to start things off nice and slow here. But working from the third floor down really means that unless St. Clair is able to find an early pick on someone overextending, it's going to be a very active uh, end of round as the Saints collapse on that third floor or on that basement, rather, and go for that final push. You can already see the members starting to break into the room. Char is currently carrying uh, the defuse, looking for a way down uh, as his team kind of gives him some vision, tries to scope things out a little bit. Uh, just provide some intel and uh, really get things going and seeing if they can maybe find themselves an early pick. 
bit of an interesting change of style here for the Saint seeing Bonk Bonk kind of the one leading the charge of sorts. First one onto the second floor. Because normally, pretty much all season, he'd be playing these anti-roamer kind of operators. He'd be picking up the Nomad and such. But he'd always be on the outside, kind of like the last one into the building alongside Chars on the on the hard breach. But instead, going in basically head first, planting as many of those air jabs as possible. Really predicting the uh, the roam, but to be honest, Grand Canyon just not going to give it to him as we do see Zombie Dude doing exactly what he needs to be doing here with this sledge. This is always the dangerous part of this first floor hold is the top down attack from the Saints. So we'll have to see as we move on forward here. 30 seconds, Saints not giving them much time. This is going to end in the bloodbath and Zombie Ooh. Dude starts things off. Yeah, it's a beautiful lead from Zombie Dude to find that opening, really taking advantage of this ledge. With 20 seconds left on the clock, Saints did a really good job of actually being able to find the bomb, just about actually making his way down in. But unfortunately, Char is going to get a little too close to that ride shield. He's going to get taken down by Klimt yet again. Big Papa taking some heat on the side as Klimt finds a double kill onto Impact. Now Bonk Bonk and a little bit of fire as well. Final fight to that riot shield, but it's just not going to happen. This GCU defense is just far too strong. Nearly all of the Saints members dropping, but Bonk Bonk is going to find the kill in the clip. That's huge for Zombie Dude. Finds a pick on some men, but unfortunately, they're not going to be able to get that plant down. And GCU with a strong hold on that defense. They just bought themselves so much time that it was impossible for the Saints to pull ahead, even when they were able to start kind of fragging out a little bit. The fact that you had the clash there, Mend was just holding that location, and for the longest time, Klimps was just right there for backup as well, as well as one other member. I want to say it was Sheiks, but I could be wrong there. But there was always somebody there to back up the clash, so nobody could try and stun them out and make the run. You're just stuck there. Electrified riot shield and the diffuser right in front of it. Saints really put themselves into a rough corner. They nearly found their way out of it, but too little, too late, which is always the risk of doing these last second pushes, the high, like high intensity, high execution, last 30 seconds style of gameplay. But sometimes, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And so far, a little bit of a slow start here for our Saints squad. Yeah, Grand Canyon University so far have done an excellent job of just holding these really strong defenses. And like you said, like even if the Saints are able to outfrag, usually by the time that they're able to make it onto the point, it's the, the pure stall provided by the Clash Mend on that on that operator. It's so hard to actually break through and find those picks. And Zombie Dude or uh, yeah, Zombie Dude and Bonk Bonk, you know, typically two of the players you see on this team that are. Uh, going in and trying to find those picks early on in the round, they're just not able to do it through that riot shield. So, uh, definitely an interesting strategy from Grand Canyon that Saints players are going to have to think about a little bit about how they want to approach that and adjust, be willing to adjust their play style to play around that that defensive tech. Absolutely, and as this round is just about to get on started, I do want to give everybody a thank you for boosting the stream with your channel points, getting this match even more and more eyes on it. Thank you so much for uh, contributing to that bonus. And joining us here tonight. Plenty of action still up ahead. Hoping to see our Saints turn this one around, but it's still extremely early. And yeah. for the most part this season, it seems like the Saints have been more comfortable on the defensive side of things. But that being said, we've seen too many times this season where they give up too many rounds on the attack. And it doesn't matter even like how good their defense is. They might have bled out just a little bit too much on the attacking side of things to get the ball rolling. So... Hoping to see that pattern change here. I feel like it's been like that for maybe the last three, four weeks or so. So hopefully getting to the drawing board, able to get them on the right side of things. Yeah, it's only week three. Uh, it's only round three, rather. You know, you've got plenty of game left to play. And usually this first two rounds, especially against a team that you may not be super familiar with, they're a good opportunity to kind of get a feeling for the team that you're playing against. But that's going to be an early pickup from Bonk Bonk to really set things off for the Saints. Found Blimps out on the side. I guess Clemps might have been roaming a little bit. I don't believe the Saints have really reached through. However, they do finally have eyes on the Clash. Oh. The one for one. Ash takes out Impact on the on, on the return kill there and really defend that. Now, men taking some feet as well as the Saints start to push in here onto the second floor. That's the it. Zombie dude zoned off a little bit here. Yeah, he's definitely in a bit of a pinch here, but that's the other thing you have to worry about. Men's really sticking to this Clash, and the other thing that you don't really think about is that that Clash this entire time is making out callouts. So the fact that Cash had basically all the information necessary to line up that Nitro Cell and just detonate it right under his feet from the floor below was a beautiful play to knock the Saints down one player. And of course, it is kind of interesting, Klimps 
the first one down on the side of Grand Canyon. Top fragger so far here in this game, but still evened up with a minute left. This is going to get nasty. Well, I don't want to say anything too soon, Danners, but once you get hit with a play like that, it's very unlikely that you're going to let that happen to you again. So at least for the Saints, you know, this is a learning opportunity at best. Don't try to fight through the riot shield. Unfortunately, the zombie dude, he is going to get taken down as well, but Charles finding the return pickups. So that's going to be a one-for-one -one trade here uh, in this game as we get closer and closer to that 20-second mark. Three for three now for both of these teams. St. Clair do have eyes on Bomb and on the member defending it. I believe that was Colo sitting on that Bomb side of St. Clair. Try to get a little bit closer here for this approach. The best case right now here for St. Clair because there is no nitro cells or any sort of late game utility available. But that being said, down one player and down the diffuser as well. This is not going to be going very well. Colo cleaning up house to take care of that one. Nicely done. That's unfortunate. You lose out on the gunfight, then your teammate comes in and does the exact same thing. You know, got to take it a little bit slower and maybe look to coordinate that a little bit better, but it's going to be Colo popping off in the one versus two, finding himself on his team that round win, now going into round number four. Saints, like you mentioned, you know, they give up a, a number of losses up on these uh, on these attacking rounds. It'd be nice to see, you know, get themselves on the scoreboard and give themselves a little bit of better of an advantage going into, uh, going into halftime. Yeah, the other thing to take note of, too, is because of the way the spans ended up working, Mira got let through one of those extremely annoying operators to deal with. Those one-way mirrors can be quite the mind game, and just seeing them just puts fear into the eyes of an attacker, even if there's nobody on the other side, because you will never know. That's too devastating. And with this third floor, uh, floor defense, GCU is basically back in the comfort zone. They've Basically done the uh, defensive world tour here, finding a victory on all of the, the three main sites. Of course, four sites for defense, but you just can't go back to the same site that you've won on if, in regards to two rounds. You went on that site, then you have to wait two rounds before you go back. So you can always skip that really bad site that you don't want. But GCU winning on all three. They're looking comfortable and maybe looking to start kind of running away with this one here on Iris Saints. Yeah, you know, we'll take some time to really let things go through. This Clash, obviously, is just doing absolutely incredible work, man. It's done a great job of piloting that operator. So far, has led them to victory all of these rounds. It's been one of the bigger threats, the more identifiable threats uh, on the side of Grand Canyon University. But it is also important to note the value that the rest of these teams are bringing. Obviously, this Valkyrie from Cheeks, those, uh, those drones, or those cameras, rather, being able to provide that, all that extra vision and utility, like... I, I kind of feel like a lot of sympathy for the Saints because Grand Canyon always has eyes on them. Like they're never getting, they're never the first to get the jump. It's always Grand Canyon knowing what's happening before it happens to them. So definitely a huge disadvantage. Kind of fighting an uphill battle here for the Saints. And with Mend here once again, by also picking up the Mira there with Colo, that's one more Nitro Cell that you do have on the defensive side of things. Cheeks, Cash, and Colo now have that ability. If they can line up one of those Nitro Cells, one of those like C4-esque kind of devices, with Mend just calling the shots, you can just easily find some quick picks here, turn this round into your favor basically for free, just because you can't blow through Mend whatsoever unless you get the flank or can somehow stun Mend up. But, of course, Mend doing a solid job. Sees the Saints players on the other side, just making sure that any possible angle is covered so that shield is constantly where it needs to be. That's an early bomb scope up from the Saints, however. They do have vision on A site now, I believe, so they're already starting to make their way down there. You can see Big Papa trying to get a little bit more vision to whip that drone through the doorway. Now Char is going for the the plant here, completely covered by the smoke, but he's going to get taken out by Cheeks. A beautiful shot through the smoke to actually find that kill, and Grand Canyon ends up picking themselves two for one. Since they're trying to get a cheeky plant, and you know they went for something a little ambitious, but it's just not going to pay off. Now Impact getting taken down by Colo as well. The Saints! Looks so good, and now it just looks so bad. One minute left. However, Zombie Dude and Bonk both finding themselves a kill in this game. You know, it's not out yet. It's not all wrapped up yet. The Saints do have an opportunity to get on that point. They don't currently have the Diffuser in hand. 
Maybe they can get themselves around this corner, look for another pick as Zombie Dude taking things very slowly, very cautious right now in this 2v2. If Saints could take out Cheeks, that will be the round because, of course, the two on one as a clash is an absolute nightmare. So you can only really focus on one side, just get the flank and you're good. But with Cheeks alive, you can never properly flank that clash. So we're going to have to see. 30 seconds left here for the Saints to get something done. All Nitro Cells are gone, of course, taking out the Saints prior to. But we'll have to see. Back and forth battle here between the Saints and GCU with a couple seconds left. And it's looking like a rough one. 101, here we go. It's going to be big. Zombie Dude facing against the Riot Shield. He's going to have to go for the plant. And Grant Man's going to round the corner. Zombie Dude getting up to contest. There's only six seconds left. Is he going to be able to get this plant off? He's going to have to try, but I don't think he has the time left. That should be the round for GCU. Actually, the plant it continues. There's going to be men finding the headshots around that one out. That's just it. I was like, there's no way it happened. <laughs> Unlucky situation for Zombie Dude, not 1v1. No, as the clash there, you just wait long enough to the point where as soon as you know that they're not going to try and fake you, that they have to stick the plant, otherwise they lose the round anyway. Then you whip out the sidearm, put the shield away, and then finally finish them off. Because, yeah, the, the way you lose that one is just, like, getting over eager. They fake you and blast you. So just by waiting, being nice and patient, mend. You can tell, I don't want to call him a one-trick here, but you can tell that this clash is definitely his defensive main. Because no matter the site, no matter, like, the positioning always sticking to that clash and right now the saints are having a hell of a hard time trying to breach through it yeah i'm looking at this and i don't even know if i want to call it a, a one trick or even a main i think it's just they know it's working and the saints have no idea how to beat it they're just going to stick with it until it fails and so far i mean four zero already to start things off going into round five that's a huge lead for grand canyon university regardless they've already won the half no matter how this ends they've already pulled themselves around lead St. Clair, it's really about salvaging as much as you can, going into that half, going into that side switch, trying to get as many rounds under your belt, and hope that you just play defense better than you're playing offense. Absolutely. That being said, though, they're not going to give themselves a lot of wiggle room if the, this pace keeps going. We've seen constantly, time and time again over the past, like, four weeks or so, where the Saints would go down, say, 5-1 to one or 4-2, to two, and only leave themselves, like, room for, like, two or three rounds of flawed defense and that's never a position you want to be in of course try one try and keep it as even as possible granted of course majority of players will say like the attacking side is harder on pretty much every map which is fair that being said though going without a round or with only one round on the attacking side of things is absolutely brutal yeah i mean the saints have kind of stuck with this offensive plan and you know they're 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 going for it every single time and it's what they're comfortable on but you also have to be willing to make adjustments, especially this uh, into this riot shield, finding new ways to attack these points, you know, set up those flanks, maybe even take more advantage out of this Nomad and this anti-roamer and see if you can really force GCU to come and approach you um, by taking really good, uh, well-coordinated flanks and approaches here. Already the Saints, however, very early into this round are going to drop a Papa finds and scopes out cash and impact is going to be able to finish that show uh that that kill off it's going to be a one man lead already for st Clair as they move farther and farther down into this building here that's one of your nitro cells gone too as well so big piece of utility gone there on the side of grand cannon grand granted however they do of course the goyo uh, so colo and cheeks both have the nitro cells still available and we did kind of see in that last round as well the uh, smoke and then plant attempt from Charles. It's a good play, but what completely shuts that down is just being able to whip a nitro cell into there and then push the button, and it just has so much area of effect exactly. that it's going to get the kill anyway. So you don't have to be pinpoint accurate, you'll still get it. So getting rid of any nitro cell is absolutely huge, and we see exactly that. Not necessarily in a perfect point of view, but Bonk Bonk does go down to the nitro cell, gets called out and taken down to even this back up 4 4. There. They know that this bomb has to be a little bit lower, so they're making their way closer and closer down to the basement. They haven't exactly found where exactly it is. They're taking their time to really get that scoped out as they move closer and closer. You know, not really willing to commit the drones yet. They want to see if they can get bodies on the point first, which I think is a good choice considering how these games have played out. Unfortunately, Saints making a little too much noise. Clemson is going to find that pickup. Zombie Dude does get the refrag, however, so we're back to an even score. Three for three, but this clash is still on the board, and there's only 47 seconds left. 
Then Claire really needs to pull it together and find a way to how they're going to deal with this riot shield, but that's absolutely huge. Zombie just going to get dropped and taken out by Cheeks as well. Your top fragger is gone. It's impacting Chars against the world here. 30 seconds left on the clock as Chars trying desperately to make his way down into the basement, but he's just not able to find that angle. And so far, Z GCU looks completely unfazed by this attack. Of course, that's always the rough thing about just using the sledgehammer on the floors. It's a it's a two-way street of sorts. And sure enough, the Saints are going to try and go for the exact same play. Way too obvious. Grand Canyon ready and waiting. Men's there on the defense, and the other player was right there behind them. You're just basically a lemming off the cliff at that point. Just gets absolutely mowed down. Grand Canyon's domination of this defense here on Cafe continues as we're just about to get at halftime after this round. But 5-0 so far for Grand Canyon University. Absolutely crushing it here. You know, Daniels, as soon as we see a map switch and we set Grand Canyon back on defense, how much you want to bet that uh, Clash is getting banned? <laughs> Oddly enough, you, it very well may. Like it, it's it's, it's single-handedly <laughs> destroying St. Clair's attacks. They they, they 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 just can't approach this shield. It's too much pressure. They're so good. This team, we've seen them all the time. They they went out on these one v ones and these duels, and they find these gunfights, and that's how they make their picks. But how are you supposed to gunfight into a riot shield? Like it completely counters their style of play. So GCU, the huge read to lead things off. Oh, I mean, it's I'm just. Right, I'm, I'm no expert, but I think I understand at least one point of dealing with a riot shield of some sort, and it's not jumping into a very narrow cor corridor with one doorway. I agree. <laughs> I'm not saying it's being played optimally, but we also have to recognize that this is a collegiate environment. You know, the players that are playing, they're really good at the games, but they haven't mastered every single situation and experience. And because of that, you know, preference does dictate a lot of how the game plays out. Uh, so if you know you're you're really big on you're a really big pick maker and that's your style and your approach like riot shields might not be your uh, might not be your best friend so finding ways of getting rid of them or getting around them is definitely a high priority. We move into round number six now. Since they're not going to surprise us with anything too too much here as they go for this lead up, I would like to see maybe this uh, sledge getting a little bit more value here. They were able to do some pretty funky things with it two rounds ago. Uh, getting some nice little uh, shots onto the wall and finding some unique openings. And, you know, maybe if you can get creative with uh, Zombie Dude on that sledge and find yourself an early pick onto those Nitro Cell Carriers, might be able to get a better attacking uh, advantage here on round number Ooh. six. And Cash going to find a nice quick one onto Bonk Bonk with just... That little bit of roam, of course, on the vigil, looking for those roams, he's finally going to get refragged over. But still, the one-for-one one value, I think Grand Canyon will take that just fine. Yeah, especially when you've been doing so well on defense, you can give yourself a, even a one-man lead. It's absolutely huge because uh, you know you already have that positional advantage of getting yourself established on point and kind of having the first say in a lot of these duels uh, definitely helps your gunfights out a lot. You can see now St. Clair Char is still on that defuse carry, looking to get himself into the building. I believe that was Big Papa still above, hanging out, chilling, or Zombie Dude, rather. Uh, as Big Papa kind of leads the charge here onto the inside. He does get found out a little bit. going to go for a little bit of a fight, but he's going to get taken out by Kolo with the flank from the ground below. Beautiful flank from Kolo to round out that kill. And St. Clair trying to breach through this doorway, but there is a member of GCU there, and it's going to be mend on the clash. Just watch how the Saints run away in fear from that riot shield completely turned away from that defensive utility. It's just impossible for them to break to the point. They're going to have to back off here with only a minute remaining on the clock. Absolutely brutal here so far. This style coming out here from Grand Canyon, a little bit less pick-oriented, but that being said, still so far so effective. However, Impact going to eventually find one here. So two members on the Saints, extremely low. To be honest, this is actually where men could just go in with the electricity on that shield and just clean up chars and probably clean up Impact when the, the electricity from... Uh, from the clash can kill you this is when a lot of hope kind of goes away here and you still have to deal with clumps and cheeks as well gonna be a rough one but let's see how the saints go and zombie dude goes down oh that's that's absolutely huge zombie dude gets taken out and so does impact as well charles is alive but he's only got two hp remaining impact did manage to find a triple kill it's a one versus one but charles has tagged even once and he's going to drop he's got to get the plant down fast and he's trying desperately to start but he's going to make too much noise mend is going to be able to find him that's going to be the round grand canyon university moving up to six and zero here in this first half absolutely brutal there of course once the uh 
<laughs> the Clash can kill you. It's just a bad time because you can't even try to get elusive. You can't take a shot to try and get the flank or anything. No, you're just going down. So unfortunately there for Saints, definitely having some moments of brilliance mid-round, but just not quite coming to an end. And it's a little bit uh, heartbreaking for some of the players because I know like... Zombie Dude's been popping off this game, and I feel like we haven't mentioned him at all. Sitting there with seven eliminations, like tied for a second across the whole uh, the whole board, across the entire game. But unfortunately, just these eliminations are just coming up short, just constantly, like one or two kills away from finding themselves around. And now there just needs to be one solid attack from the side of Grand Canyon University, and then Cafe is going to be a wash. We'll have to see if they can find themselves the perfect game right around the corner, if they can make this attack stick. Yeah, St. Clair now on the defensive side. Sides have flipped. Again, very similar composition to what GCU was running, obviously, with the exception no Clash present. And we'll see if it's a Clash dip, Danners. We'll see if that really was the difference all along at the end of this round, what really dictates how this game plays out, as you mentioned, Zombie Dude has been playing you know, pretty well considering the circumstances. Uh, it's really about inspiring the rest of your team to to find those openings and get themselves on the scoreboard. You know, some of the usual big names that we see in these games, like Big Papa, usually does an incredible job of finding these picks and uh, early on in the game, but uh, haven't seen that from him yet. I'd like to see him maybe show up on the scoreboard just a little bit more. Teams get navigating through Christmas Wonderland here. Grand Canyon going to make their way onto the point as five and take a slightly unique approach here. Don't haven't seen this too much. Usually our Saints like to go a different way. It's going to be a more roundabout approach as they come up from the side here. They're still going to make their way down. Looks like they're going to go from top down as well. Danners, explain maybe the relevance of taking that, uh, that, that, that distinctive start point for GCU. Distinctive start point in regards to... What exactly? I might have... Miss this spot they're, that you're they're about. They're load in. They're load in. They loaded in uh, at a different spawn point than what we typically see the Saints, and it looked like they were going for a bit of a, a, a side flank approach as opposed to coming in head on, uh, which is what we usually see. I just thought it was interesting being that uh, alternative lead. Yeah, absolutely. Very well could have a better meaning. Unfortunately, it's personally, not as much on specific knowledge in regards to that one, but that's all oh, good. Okay, at the end of the day, you do end up pretty much at the same place up on that rooftop and start making your way down once again. That's, that's exactly what we are going to see. And then honestly, um, real quick, shout out to Men. He seems to be the ultimate support player. You pick the uh, the Riot Shield, who's never really going to find himself on the kill board. You p then you're also the Hard Breacher, who hardly ever finds himself in a gunfight. That is an ultimate support player here in R6. Just... Absolutely killing it here for this GCU squad. They love our supports, man. They do great work for us, and you know, it's it's they often go undervalued. We like to grade our players based on their abilities to find themselves on the scoreboard. And speaking of scoreboard, it's gonna be Big Papa finding the first kill of the round here. But definitely, you know, providing a lot of utility to your team, you know. Like I was saying, typically players are assessing their ability to win out on gunfights, but that's not the only value you provide to your team. There's a lot more you can do, and so far the Saints. Providing tons of value to the team. That's going to be Zombie Dude finding a pick. Now four for two for the Saints as Bunk Bunk gets the refrag on Cash. And St. Clair might be a defensive diff, Danners. That looked pretty strong from the Saints. A four to zero defense coming up from St. Clair. Almost impossible for Grand Canyon to actually approach the point. Absolutely. That one actually looked like a different team entirely, to say the least here. But that being said, though, sure, your defense looks good, but it just takes one bad round and all of a sudden the game is done we know that our saints are very strong in regards to playing when the hot seats underneath them we've seen this from the league team we've seen this from rocket league as well once the match point is threatened all of a sudden it's like a switch just clicks and they go absolutely nuts but again it's a very all-in kind of style and as of right now if this actually sticks this might be uh a little bit interesting as we see the fuse hover that is locked in. We hardly ever get to see fuse in competitive in general, let alone in collegiate. So this is going to be something I'm going to be personally keeping an eye on. And to be honest, with this this first floor defense, I think that is going to be a solid pick. Yeah, I do like this a vigil coming out for Bonk Bonk. I think it's uh, it really plays into exactly how the Saints want to play. 
is finding those other decks. That said, you're playing a roamer into one of the more acclaimed, popular anti roamers, being that Nomad as well. Uh, those air blasters are going to be uh, make it very difficult uh, to get yourself around. That being said, uh, you know you were telling me a little bit about Vigil's interactions before. Are there, he's able to kind of get through a lot of the scoping and intel. How does that work with those air blasters in the Nomad? Does he have an advantage into that 1v1? I believe it does not matter. If he pops his gadget and he goes across an air job, he's still getting blasted. It's just a matter of avoiding cameras and whatnot. So if he makes his, his presence known, however, and then like Cash fires the air jab, I do believe it's too little too late. Chat, by all means, feel free to correct me if I am wrong on this one, but I believe that is the case. I don't think you can walk past an air jab with the Vigil gadget activated as we do see him on the move and we see like the, the little bit of alliance the modified camera of sorts here that's how you know that he's got his gadget activated but it can't be put on forever it has to recharge absolutely you know it wouldn't be a collegiate esports league if we weren't learning something and that includes your broadcast team so thank you for having patience with us as we work through this all together definitely not my main game but it's something i want to get a little bit more comfortable with and that's going to be men his camera getting spotted out by the Saints can get taken down as well. So, you know, there's a lot of that utility. However, Clips, first kill on the board, finds that pick onto Bonk Bonk. But it is going to be the Roamer on the side of Saints that that Vigil we were talking about does get taken down quite early on in the round. Minute 45 remaining. This great advantage tries to approach this point. Definitely rough, however. Oh, huge wall bang actually coming out here from uh, Clips again. Gonna find himself his second saucy. one. As, of course, the breaching charge is available to kind of do similar to what Sledge would be doing, trying to get that top-down angle. However, of the Saints that are alive here, we see three Nitro Cells available. If they could find this and make it stick, that could definitely turn things around. However, they are pressured from the Fuse from Cheeks. Being able to stick that grenade uh, mortar shell, oh. basically, is going to make things brutal. And he finds himself, I think, a double with his gadget. That is absolute best-case scenario. Grand Canyon University finishing things off with the Fuse. Damn, that's stylish. That is an incredible round from Grand Canyon University. An excellent leadoff uh, to start things off. The double kill coming up from Clemps. You know, that MVP really for the game did an incredible job on uh, top fragging really for his team. You know, like I said, those fraggers, those top sc uh, kill scorers, they're always the ones show leading up on the scoreboard. They're always the ones that we're clapping and applauding for. But you really can't go out of this without recognizing the value that men provided for. Grand Canyon University did an incredible job on the defense, single-handedly winning them the half. Uh, and then at the switch, you know, providing that utility, as you mentioned, swapping over to the ace and doing even more utility stuff. Like, you know, you got you to gotta give props to that. If you can be a support player in an FPS like our, uh, R6, it's, uh, it, it takes a lot of uh, patience, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. I know even when players are first starting out this game, this it's a big wake-up call. You go in starting to try and uh, <laughs> running gun of sorts, and then all of a sudden you're getting shot from areas you don't even know is even possible. So just mm -hmm. the, the game in general is such a patient shooter. And then the way that uh, GCU was playing this was just even that much more slowed down and patient, except for that very final attack, the complete tempo switch, with the fuse play, which I absolutely loved. Their Saints knew it was coming. It wasn't six picked over, but just did not have an answer for it again. And it just seems to be the, the case where if it's like a meta on meta kind of battle, Saints do okay. But as soon as you throw a wrench into it that you're actually really good at performing and executing on, they look like they're in trouble. And hopefully as we get ready to go into game number two, they'll be A-OK -okay moving forward because of course we do have clubhouse another one of those maps that saints have basically played to death so far in this season but of course it's a very popular map that both teams would have basically played to death so it make it excites me but worries me at the same time what does grand canyon university have for clubhouse yeah, absolutely like you can practice the strategy and a composition to death but if you're not prepared for some of the you know more flexible options and especially not necessarily just like off meta but just something that you don't see as often you know it's definitely something you'll want to work into your practice regimen so you can get a little bit more comfortable with some of those picks um i guess that's really the biggest downside to this you know you have to recognize it is a collegiate league you know players aren't playing 40 hours a week they're they're playing whatever practice time they have for the week and you know sometimes all you have the time for uh, is to practice that one strategy and really perfect the hell out of it. Like you mentioned, we've seen some incredible performances from the Saints this season. Unfortunately, game one just wasn't one of them. Uh, you know, and it is what it is. And 
you move on into game number two. But Grand Canyon so far doing an incredible job. Like, as we mentioned, club team, but a very strong club team. Uh, yeah. And they're really showing up to this school. And just goes to show just this style that they're pulling off. It's so well rehearsed that, like, sure, like, everyone's got to deal with their collegiate schedules and or college schedules while playing collegiate and whatnot. But the style that they have, regardless of what is supposed to be strong here, it's just so well practiced that it doesn't matter. And we're going to see them try and take that into Clubhouse as well. I'm curious if Clash will come back out or if they have something completely different. But no, I gotta, that's getting banned. It's, it's that's probably band getting difference. banned. That's fair. That's fair. Other than the Clash, however, do you switch anything else up? Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, you're asking probably the worst person you could ask <laughs> that question to. Uh, but, I mean, every other band we saw was exactly what we've expected from this team uh, all season. It was very straightforward. Uh, operators that you know don't really get to see play in a competitive environment just because of how oppressive they are. Uh, I think the Clash is just more one of those respect bands. Like you recognize, you literally handed six rounds over because of that pick. You know that is a big hit to take, uh, and I think it's one of those things where you kind of, but you know this is just something we're not very good into playing against. Something we need more practice with. Uh, let's you know we'll we'll sack a band this time around. We'll deal with something that we're a little bit more confident around and. You know, it may be a little bit trickier to beat, but at least we understand it. And I mean, that's the way I'm looking at it, right? You know, you're always asking me from my coach's perspective. Uh, you know, I, I have no problem giving a respect ban every now and again if uh, if the enemy team has shown that, you know, they have that capacity. This makes things interesting, however, because when we do get ready to go to game two, if we are going to see a clash ban, it means that um, that mirror is still going to be available. Echo is still going to mm -hmm. be available. And who do you get rid of between Cade and Wamai? Who got banned last game? Who do you let through? Personally, I think you kind of just let the little well, my slide. However, I do believe yeah. that was the ban on the side of uh, it was GCU. Uh, GCU. So, like, do you, for the Saints side of things, do you get rid of the Cade and know that you're going into Clubhouse with the possibility of dealing with two operators that can play with electricity? That's actually kind of difficult to deal with. Constant uh, bandit tricking or Cade tricking or is going to be prominent here in this one so definitely going to look forward to seeing what the saints end up doing but i do need a quick second to actually set up this lobby so we're going to throw this to a very very quick five minute break and we'll hop back into the swing of things as soon as we're in the pick and ban phase <laughs> 